<laughs> yeah. Let's let's, uh, let's 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 not. I bet you you can have us <laughs> out right. of here. All right, I'm feeling really good about 6:30. Right on the right on the nose. Maybe not having so many people on the on the board is you That's know. Good. All right, I'm going to call this uh, meeting to order. Uh, and uh, and first, Mary, would you uh, would you do the the honors on the roll call? Yes, um, this is for our Tuesday, May 20th, 2014 meeting. Um, Chairman Hill? I am here. Member Brush? Here. Member Jessica? Here. Member Walker? Here. Absent Volkman, absent Kohlmeyer, and our new board member, Sandra Douglas, will be joining us on June 17th. Thank you. So I believe we have a quorum. We do have a quorum. Yeah, Thank and you. we are uh, going to be addressing some voting issues today, so that's good. Um, first of which is uh, approval of the minutes from the March 18th uh, board meeting. Um, has everyone had a chance to review those? I did. Okay. Are there any comments on them? I would move to approve them as proposed. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. It passes. Um, and uh, and then we did cancel the uh, the April meeting. So uh, nothing else on. <laughs> approval of the minutes um, at this time we have a chance for people in the audience um, to uh, to address us with questions they might have about things that are happening in Parks and Rec or that the board is engaged with I don't think anyone's here uh, from the but uh, but I want to encourage those watching at home uh, to come out and see us sometime we'd love to hear from you if you have thoughts um, the next item on the agenda is the uh, Forest Park project update um, and I guess Ralph Giswaldo, the, the uh, leader of that effort, is not going to be with us. His plane was delayed. But um, al along with him uh, is still Peter Cherry and Augie Ziccarelli, I think. And Peter, we have you first. You, um, you, you, have, the, you have the floor. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to give the Parks and Rec Group aboard a update on the Forest Park project, which, as you know, has been going on for quite some time. Uh, I'm the treasurer of the group of the Forest Park Project Corporation Board. That's a long handle. But I've also been very involved in the construction that's been going on for quite some time. I'm joined tonight by Augie Ziccarelli. And Augie uh, is uh, he's, a, he's a Lake Forest resident. He's happened to be a member of the Plan Commission. And professionally, he is in the business of doing construction and also being <coughs> owner's representative. So he has been serving as our owner's representative for this project. Uh, Briefly, as you may know, this project had two broad phases to it. One was to redo the infrastructure of the park, and the other is to do the landscaping and the hardscape of the park. The infrastructure was completed last year, and that was the piece that the city shared with in to the tune of $800,000. Uh, we put in another 200 ourselves. That project is done. It's finished. Uh, city's paid up. We paid up the contractor, and we're moving on with a new set of contractors now in this stage, uh, in this phase, actually, in the springtime on both the hardscape and the landscape and it's begun and uh, the we'll share with you in a moment Augie will share you in a moment what the work plan is but just give you a brief overview I, I don't know if we if I spoke to this group I, sort of, I, I lost track of all the groups I've spoken to but we used to speak of doing this project this phase coming up of doing the hardscape first and then we're going to come back and do the landscape it, and it seemed like a good idea at the time. But as we dug into it and we began to realize and appreciate the complexities of the intricacies of, of the interrelationship of these various things and sat with our contractors, actually Augie led us through a session in which we, we've changed uh, our approach and we're going to be working in stages through the park. And that will allow us to keep the park, I won't say fully open, but our citizenry will be able to use portions of the park at a time rather than have the whole thing shut down or, or, or really badly messed up. So it's, it's a convenience issue. Issue. It's a safety issue for the populace, and I guess somewhat selfishly, it'll cost us less as well. So with that, in that just brief overview, we've, we've gone from infrastructure to hardscape to landscape to infrastructure to working in stages throughout through the park. Let me ask Augie come up, and he'll go through the uh, presentation with you. Thanks. Terrific. Thanks, Peter. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Augie Ziccarelli. I'm the uh, construction representative for the Forest Park Project Corporation. 
Uh, maybe at the risk of repeating a little bit of what Peter said, but maybe to give you a, a full background as to what we're entailed uh, out there at Forest Park. I wanted to let you know that, as you probably know, the Forest Park Project is a collaborative private-public project to improve the Forest Park and uh, east end of Deer Path Road, approximately 12 acres of land overlooking Lake Forest Beach. Both public and private funds are used to improve the park, and at the end of the project, all, all improvements are the custody of the city and for use by the public. A group of citizens have formed the Forest Park Project Corporation. This is the group representing the private entity. The group has contracted with the landscape architect, organized fundraising efforts, provided communications to the city for use with the public, and by, uh, and by agreement is in charge of executing the construction work associated with the project. The city and the Forest Park Project Corporation have executed an agreement which was approved by the city council regarding the management and the execution of the project, giving each side specific responsibilities. The design and the construction stages have been a coordinated effort between both parties. The city departments of engineering, parks and rec, which includes forestry, and community development have all been involved. Phase one, as Peter had said, took place last fall, and the work included demolition of the existing road, excavation, rough grading, curbing, the first course of paving, a completely new storm sewer system throughout the park, a new electrical system brought to the park, and new street lights located within the park. The phase one work took place from September through November last fall. <clears throat> phase two work includes more curb work, paving, bollard lighting, drinking fountains, <clears throat> stone benches, stone paving, a new boardwalk, and an extensive amount of landscaping. Also, a water distribution system is being added throughout the park in order to take care of and maintain the new plant material. The corporation has been in charge of bidding and contractor selection for phase two, but has kept the city informed of the contractor selection and has held numerous bid review meetings with the contractor, the city representatives, and the corporation all present. This work took place in February and March of this year. Phase two was originally scheduled to take place April and May of this year, 2014, then there was going to be a break over the summer, and then it was going to pick up again in September, October, November of this year and be completed at the end of November. It became apparent in March of this year that the plan was going to be stressed to the point of being unachievable due to the delay in the start of the work. The work was not able to start in April and has even been challenging the month of May. Because remnants of the winter continued into April, and the addition of the water distribution system, it seemed logical to, to not have a start and stop approach. And so we approached the city at the end of April with the plan that I will show you tonight. <clears throat> the idea is to start and continue work throughout the summer with mineral interruption to the park activities and continued nonstop progress towards completing the project. Through the use of the added water distribution system through the summer, it makes this become possible. Additionally, it provides selected areas to become teaching opportunities over the summer at a safe distance during the construction work. Selfishly, on the part of the corporation, it provides exposure to the project in an effort to continue fundraising. There are two periods when the park is still closed. It's from now up until May 30th and then after September 1st. But during the interim, the park will be open with, with some restrictions that I'll show you tonight. During the summer, the key items are keeping the center path open to the Belvedere Steps, having the walking path open, which parallels Lake Road, and having the ring road open on weekends. At no time are the loads re lead, leading down to the beach 
or the operations of the beach itself affected by our work. The progression of the work will be from north to south, as I'll show you right now. This is a site plan of the table land uh, over the beach. The, the park boundaries that we're working on are basically just like this. And this wooded area is the bluff overlooking the beach. The first phase includes the work, and I know you can't read the writing because uh, it's small up there, but this is the work that's going to be done by May 30th. And what it includes, as I had said, the central theme is keeping this path open, keeping the Belvedere open. So by May 30th, June 1st, this will be open. We're also going to be putting in this path here so that if there's construction work, which the bulk of it takes place up in this area here, people still have a way, a place to walk if they're just simply wanting to walk or, or walk the dog. And also they have access down to the beach this way here. Those were two key things um, that we thought would be important to keep open through the summer. The first area that we would work in during the summer would be this north area here. Uh, there is some grading work that takes place. Uh, we'd be installing this section of the path here that also has some curbing. And during this phase here, of course, this will stay open. That stays open. And the ring road will be open on weekends. So what we're attempting to do is take a section of the park, work on it complete at that time, which is the hardscape, the landscape, and like I say, the use, the use of the new uh, water distribution system should make that possible. The next period we have is the work that would be completed between June 15th and July 15th. We would be occupying the center portion of the park. Again, with the same conditions that that's open, that's open, and the ring road is open on the weekends. The third phase of the summer work includes the work between July 15th and August 15th, and that includes the work towards the south end, uh, just north of the south parking lot. There is a path, there's a boardwalk that goes through the woods. There is some path work up at the top near the edge of the bluff, and there's also 15 lighting bollards that go in this area here. The next phase as we move south is to take care of the work between August 15th and September 1st, which is south of the south parking lot and the plantings that go in there. And then the work that takes place after Labor Day, after September 1st, includes the, the paving of the work in the south parking lot, the paving of the ring road, uh, and finishing up, there's some benches that go along the bluff and so forth. And with the goal in mind by the end of November to be completely done with everything in the park. We've, um, we've reviewed this plan with Mary, with Chuck, uh, with uh, Bob Kiley, our city manager. And the feedback we get is uh, one of great cooperation. It's, it's a great thing, you know, you, all this private money going into a public property and then uh, becoming part of the city improvements at the <coughs> end of the project. So we're excited about just keeping it moving rather than the start and the stop. And I think with, uh, with minimal interruption, we can keep the park going and the park programs going and not interfere with the beach at any time. So having said all that, I don't know if you have any questions for me. Any questions? Could, could I mention just a couple things too? Um, uh, one of the things that we're working on is using this look, this final map up here that's colorized throughout in a um, simplified, instead of having all the detail lists below, because a lot of that is more referencing um, small items that Augie and this crew need to track, we've condensed that down and we're adding um, the access clarification under each color zone so it'll say you know ring road open weekends only belvedere access available and so on for each of those areas and we're going to have that made into a three by six 
sign that will be in the upper part of the park and then also down the lower level so that the public can be more aware and attuned throughout the entire project as to the work that's going to happen and when and what what that means for their availability down there um, so i think that's um, going to be extremely helpful informational piece that we're putting together and then when we um, created this we also have the ability to kind of put them on 11 by 17 and we're going to have them at various locations and like at our buildings and things like that so people can pick that up as well if they're interested and on our website and on the forest park uh, project website as well um, there's also a letter going out to neighbors of the park as well as some of their donors and our database we've had to give them an update that everything's kicking off again and here's what's coming so they'll also have a a current communication piece that's going out um, to the public as well. But um, I do think that this um, will be posed some challenges because we've already learned last fall how much the public really wants to continue to use the park even when we're busy with construction. And we can only emphasize, and I'm sure Augie knows this even better than I do, that there's a lot <coughs> of safety still that we want people to be aware of, to you know refrain from trying to you know, ride your bike around a backhoe and things like that and stay out of the park and think safety first and really, you know, the more that we can have people just adhere to staying on the paths that we've provided for them, the, the, that's going to be really helpful for us, I think, for a safety perspective down there. Um, and then the last thing, I know, Augie, you mentioned that last phase with the asphalt. Just to clarify, the first course is already down. Right. This is the final lift. So if you are driving on the ring road on the weekends, you actually have a physical surface that's that's down it's just not the final course so just wanted people to know that because i know a lot of people like to to drive on the on the ring road um so and as jeff does part of the beach uh spotlight next he's going to highlight the parking changes for everybody here in a minute so maybe the only thing i'd like to add as well is you know there's a long time between now and the end of november so as uh we have weekly meetings and chuck uh, attends Chuck Myers attends our weekly meetings so as things are are fluid as they are in the construction industry due to weather material deliveries etc um, we keep it organized every week and Chuck is aware of everything you know representing Parks and Rec at the meeting so as as things develop he's right there with us and understands what what we're doing and we listen to uh, to his ideas and decisions as well and I think we're at, what, um, $2.3 million in fundraising, the Forest Park Project Board is. And um, so they've got some more fundraising that they're, you know, wishing to pursue. So we want to encourage that as well. I don't know, Peter, would you like to say more what's on, the, on what's the total? Event? What's the total amount you're looking for at this point? Uh, the entire project is a $4 million project. And that includes the 800 that the city actually it's 850 that the city paid there's fifty thousand dollars in engineering fifty three thousand dollars in engineering fees a long time ago and i said as i said the city's all done um we need uh, we need to raise about 3.2 million and that is not all for construction however that also includes back in time the architect's fees it includes it includes augie and also a man named galen gates who's helping us on horticultural consulting and construction management um, and it goes all the way down to postage stamps and so on it's, it's that's that's the whole bit the the project that you're looking at here that augie has up here is about 2.2 million dollars a little bit over in fact i was just going through it again this afternoon anticipating a question such as that just to make sure that i was i i had the right number so um that, that's about what the whole thing comes up to. And we, we uh, at this point, about 3.2, that we, we, we have about 2.4, almost, we're approaching 2.4. This, this has been a good month, 150,000 came in. That's a great, that's a great thing, but you're still, you, you're, there's still a, a substantial way to go. Yeah, there and, is, and, and financing's been arranged, yeah, yeah, exactly. In fact, given, that, since I said that, I, because <coughs> this is public, uh, the Chicago Bears made a commitment which is wonderful, That's just great. wonderful. It's one of our lead donors. Terrific. Yeah, it's fantastic. That's great. So fundraising and bridging that gap will not delay the no, time schedule no, that's and not, the ability to get no, it done. I, I, it's well, the simplest way to put it. I'm well aware of the, I'm well aware of what needs to be done, and, and my friends at the bank, sort of kitty corner over here, we're, we're in contact. Good. <clears throat> good. Good. I think we're in pretty good shape. Anything else, Peter, that you wanted to share? 
Only to reiterate that at the risk of being gushy, the cooperation we've had from Mary and her group, and before that from Mike Thomas and his group last fall has been great, and Kathy too. It's, 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 uh, it's been good. And because it's in everybody's best interest to make this thing work. And, and work right and get it done and get it done well. So uh, I've spent time in here with Mary and others going over the, uh, the, the graphic that she mentioned um, and fine tuning that. We will, that PR is important for us. It'll help with fundraising. It helps with the populace. It helps you with, because it answers people's questions before they ask the questions. That's the idea. And particularly for those people who are there and they're wondering, well, what's going on now? after having seen the thing candidly somewhat trashed over the winter for so long. So mm. it's moving ahead. Trees are going in today. The path, you think, Augie, will go in, start going in on Thursday, Augie, Thursday. Augie told me. So I was there the other day, and 120 trees were plopped into the south parking lot while we were standing there. It's, uh, it's, it's a big deal. It is a big deal. It's, it's a big project. It's a big deal. It's been planned for a long time, um, and, uh, and, and a lot of people have had a hand in making this uh, project happen and we uh, at least personally I I am uh, uh, I appreciate what you're doing what you two are doing and and certainly what Ralph has done and the rest of the uh, of the uh, uh, Forest Park group um, you guys have done some uh, amazing work and I think frankly this is a repeat of, of what's been said a number of times but it was a it was a tough process to get to a, a plan but I thought it was ultimately an awesome plan and I personally can't wait to see what you guys are brewing down there I think it's gonna look great we'll invite you to the ribbon cutting yeah thanks yeah. all right Thank you. <coughs> I guess we're uh, we've got a spotlight on uh, the Forest Park Beach and boating basin and uh, Jeff you ready I am ready <coughs> take it away uh, good evening uh, tonight I get to spotlight the beach in the basin. So down at Forest Park, we um, have such a wonderful facility and that is because of 27 years ago, the uh, city council, the mayor, community groups, city staff worked diligently to provide us with the, the facility that we have now. And it is really like no other beach along the North Shore. Um, with that, um, the beach, uh, we divide it into two, two sections. Uh, the beach section, which is solely for uh, swimming. The season actually begins this weekend. We will be open uh, with lifeguards staffed uh, this weekend. After um, Memorial Day, uh, we will not um, schedule lifeguards until um, the following uh, weekend, then on a daily basis through Labor Day. Um, they are on, they are on uh, duty between uh, 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Uh, during those, uh, during those uh, both the Saturday, Sundays, the weekdays, weekends. Uh, we also have um, beach guards. They um, monitor the access, access points, so they will be staffed at the Belvedere, the north and the south um, entrances. And they are on duty from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. So they'll close down the facility at the end of the night, make sure that cars are out. They work a lot with the police department to make sure that everybody clears out um, of those areas. Now, um, we do charge a fee for non-residents on weekends and holidays only on those times. So when they come down, um, they would have to pay that fee. We do track our resident and non-resident use of both the, um, the beach and the basin. Um, non-residents are not allowed to park along the beach. They have to come into the business just, excuse me, business district, usually by the train station, and then uh, walk the distance, it's about a mile, to uh, the beach. Of course, if they want to drop off, um, you know, the, whatever they're bringing to the beach, their um, um, guests or whatever, they can do that, then they just have to take the vehicle up to the bu business district. Um, residents um, are allowed to use the beach so long as they have their city sticker affixed to the window. Now, um, they, if they walk or ride their bike, they're supposed to have some form of identification, a driver's license, I know this sounds weird, but a water bill, a library card, a school ID, <coughs> uh, just to show that they are a resident of uh, Lake Forest. If um, they do not have any of those, they can go to the Recreation Center, uh, the Registration Office, and we will provide them a free 
Forest Park Beach Pass that they can use to gain entrance. Um, now, what are cells? Cells are areas of the beach. We have four cells. The first cell is um, as you come right down off of the, um, the north dr um, driveway, right at the bottom of that, if you look right out to the water, that's cell one. That's the 21 and over beach. It's not guarded. Uh, it's swim at your own risk. Um, the, next, the next one is right in front of the parking lot. That um, is cell number two that is guarded. It is monitored by lifeguards. It, you can um, swim, you can take rafts as long as you have no more than two people in the raft. Uh, cell three is right next to it, um, and that's in front of the pavilion, the guard office. That too is guarded by, uh, by the lifeguards. Cell four is um, really a, a basin cell. It's for launching uh, watercraft, getting on and off, um, you know, uh, a jet ski, a sailboat. It is not for swimming. It's not guarded. Um, so those are the cells that we have. Um, from time to time, we will have to close the beach. Um, we have uh, from the Lake County Health Department um, a system in cell three that monitors uh, temperatures, water conditions, uh, wind, and it will tell the lifeguards or the manager that the, the bacteria level has reached the level that we need to close it. It's unsafe for people to swim in it. So if people um, wanted to find out if we we're open for the day, they would just need to call um, the beach office or they can go online to the, the uh, excuse me, the Park and Recreation Department's website and there's a link on there that takes them directly to the Lake County Health Department's um, beach closure page and it will tell you all the conditions. So it gives them, you know, where the, how uh, the air temperature, the water temperature, that sort of thing. So, and if uh, that's not available, they can always call the registration office. They can be more, you know, more than happy to help out answer those questions. Um, with the beach, um, early in the season, the water temperature is extremely frigid. I think right now it's about 40, 42 degrees, and it's, it, can right. be un, it can be unsafe to be in there for an, an extended period. So I want to stress to uh, people using the beach that um, to watch out for uh, this cold water. It's, it's dangerous. You can, it can lead to hypo, hypothermia. And... Um, especially young children they might be it might today was a beautiful day it's 80 degrees out i saw young children out there playing in the water you know they have on their little swim outfits and stuff but their their feet are exposed and you can lose a lot of heat from from your feet so if you see um kids with blue lips uncontrollable shivering stumbling mumbling you know take them take, get them out of the water get some you know warm clothes on them wrap them in some towels or blankets and maybe just go home for the day after that because they really we need to make sure that they're safe and you know it's um really everybody's really needs to watch out for it because it's extremely dangerous okay the basin the basin is uh open actually it opened at the beginning of uh may uh, the Parks Department does a, a great job of uh, dredging out the basin, getting it ready so that we can, um, so people can get in and out to open water. Uh, the good news is we have about 9 to 12 inches of more water to work with, so we're looking at the, the deepest part is about 8 feet, which is uh, you know, really good to making sure some of those fixed keel boats can get in and out. Um, but we, uh, we are open through the end of November, uh, Monday through uh, Friday from 8 to 4 p.m., 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. We do have a uh, ramp attendant that will help people uh, launch and retrieve their boats. Um, Saturday and Sunday, it's uh, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., and the, the gates lock at 9 p.m. Um, Storage options, we still have some storage. The sand storage and the compound storages have uh, hit their maximums already, but there are some spaces on the racks. Um, we're seeing people uh, kind of waiting to see what the weather's gonna turn before they start bringing out their boats, thinking about how they're gonna store it. So 
Um, we start the process back in uh, February, getting uh, letters out, reminding people that they need to uh, renew that sort of thing. So um, we are continuing to do non, non-resident launching. Um, that's something that we started uh, uh, two years ago. We had probably about 30 last year, um, but non-residents can launch during the weekdays um, for $60. We do not allow them on the weekends and holidays uh, for, for launching. So um, we are, we will be continuing that process. So you go to the beach what do you do at the beach i mean there's lots of things that you can do we have the watercraft usage uh program so if you wanted to take a kayak uh double kayak a windsurfer uh paddleboard sailboard you can you know do that um it, you go down to the basin side there's an, a rental attendant down there there may be some um skill testing or some um you know we, we just need to make sure that you can take out a a cotton a kayak or a sail uh, boat so just to make sure that you're safe so um, those things are available you can rent it by the day or you can rent it by the hour um, we are having special events again um, this year we have um, several regattas throughout the um, the summer months we are having on um, august 2nd the uh, starlight theater which is a movie at the beach uh, and then September 6th and 7th, um, Rob Carmichael, who is the curator of the Wildlife Discovery Center, will do the family camp out uh, once again. Um, there are fitness classes that you can uh, uh, do over the, uh, the summer. They are in the early mornings. There's a TRX class, yoga, and some boot camps. Um, if you're interested in taking a fitness class, uh, you can call the registration office uh, and they can you know, help you out with that or you can contact um, Jason Bustecker or Kim Yesian. Um, or Kurt Volkman, who took the yoga last summer. So he said it was fabulous way yeah. to start his day. So Yeah, it's six, seven long. o'clock in the morning. You know, it's, you know, sun's coming up. Not cut, should be up a little bit, but it's really nice to be able to do that. And uh, back again is Raging Kitchen. Um, Helen and her crew will be back. Um, actually met with her down there today. She is really excited uh, for that. You know, the, um, they started something last year, um, Saturdays and Sundays at 7 a.m. They do a, sort of a breakfast where you can get Belgian waffles with fresh fruit, uh, bacon, eggs, wraps, all kinds of stuff. It was very, very popular uh, for her. So she's going to be back down there if you wanted to have her do a picnic. She can put um, little. She can put a package together. Um, if you wanted to do, um, you know, have a, some friends down there, and you wanted her to do the food, she's more than happy to do that. She um, every weekend she does some kind of theme uh, food. Like um, she did a, a baseball food where you can get a Dodger dog and uh, some other stuff. It was, you know, pretty interesting. It's pretty nice. So we're really happy to have her back. I know she, she it was very popular. Uh, so when, when are they going to open up this year? They're going to be, they're, well, actually Helen was in there today, although she wasn't ready, but she was selling, um, but she'll be there uh, tomorrow, uh, excuse me, starting on Saturday. Now Saturdays and Sundays, she's open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And on the weekday, she's open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. But if you wanted to do something a little bit later, all you have, you know, she, she's more than happy to help out. You just have to give her a call. Um, you can call the um, beach office um, to get her <coughs> or, 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 you know, if, contact me and I can get you her contact information. So, um, yeah, we're going to have some challenges for uh, this summer. And the big challenge is going to be parking. Uh, with the construction, there are going to be, uh, well, the, as, as, um, Augie like said the south parking lot is, is not available. So in the past, what we have done is we have filled the north parking lot, which is right in, in this area here. <coughs> and then from there, we um, put uh, parking in the south parking lot. And we went along the ring road. And then if we still even at that point, if we had even more people that we couldn't park, we, put, we would put them down the south lots the lower south lot. So this year, uh, we will continue to uh, park people in the north parking lot. 
Uh, and then when we're in overflow, we're going to put people in the lower south lot up to a point because we still have to make room for people who bought a, a, a launching pe uh, permit uh, and make sure that um, we have space for them. And then uh, from there, uh, we're going to have to direct people to the business district. Probably, you know, we're trying to find other places to put them. There, there's no parking in the neighborhood. It's just it's going to be a challenge. And if we hit a 85, 90 day, and we're going to we're going to figure out, we're going to figure out where to put them. So we're going to. I would strongly suggest that people carpool, that they walk, they ride their bike, they do anything other than drive down there, because uh, it's. It, it, at a point, we may have to turn even residents away. We're not allowing non, we don't allow non-residents to park down there, but um, it's gonna be difficult for us. But we are preparing um, the summer staff to you know, handle the, the complaints or hand, you know, how to handle difficult situations or how to direct people in the right place at the right time and how, and how best to do that and give them some, some tools that they'll most likely need. Um, so the other thing that we're Can I just add to that, I yeah. think it's important though, um, I mean, overflow days were, they're not every day. So, right. you know, we're talking about a few occasions during the summer where you're going to find those parking challenges. It's going to be on the days when it's 85 plus and, you know, everybody wants to come to the beach. And it's Saturday it's or not, Sunday. Yeah, but it's right. not, um, it's not every single day. But we do want to encourage uh, bike riding, as he's mentioned, and the carpooling. And we will be providing some additional bike racks um, still up top of the park at the as you come down Deer Path. We'll have some bike racks, additional bike racks, so people can you know still bike and and store their bikes there, even though the park's under construction. So the biking park is still available. Right. Sorry. Right. So um, the other challenge is, is, excuse me, the other challenge is the pavilion rentals. With the pavilion rentals, we give uh, the renter uh, 15 passes so that they can have their guests go down there uh, to, to park, be part of that. Well, because of the, the lack of parking, we have decided to limit, not limit, we've decided you get your rental, we reduce the price from what it was normally to compensate people for the lack of not being able to have parking passes and encourage them to, if they have residents, residents can come, but if they have a non-resident, they're gonna to have to carpool them down. And additionally, um, we cannot guarantee, because they have the passes, we cannot <clears throat> guarantee that there will be a space available for their, their guests, which is something that um, we weren't necessarily able to do in the past, but it's never been a problem because we didn't really have these parking issues that we have now. So are they going so, to get the passes, but it's just a matter of whether they're going to be using well, them or they're not even going to get the guests. They're not passes. even going to, they're not even going to get the passes. Correct. Jeff, could you clarify though, for those who've already applied? Yeah. Although, you know, uh, I'm sorry. Thank you so much. Um, we, we were under the understanding that, um, after July 4th, we could, you could have, um, uh, of rentals and that this wouldn't be a problem the the south parking lot w would be available but because now that the construction has moved <coughs> to the entire summer we just feel that it is we can't we can't we can have the rental uh, the rentals we're trying to make sure that we don't have back-to-back -back rentals that would also compound that issue of not having parking space but just not being able to to give them 15 pass or any passes at that point it's just it so, just so let sold. me just clarify so what you what you have done is you've sold a certain number of pavilion rentals and issued passes to those people already that's correct but from from today on or may one from may 1st yeah. on you you can't get any more passes that's correct okay right all right okay so um, here's the attendance for the last three years. As you can see, um, we average, you know, right around, you know, seventy some, seventy some thousand. Um, the, excuse me, uh, the summer of 2011 and 2013 were cold, some cold summers. I think the average temperature was about 73 degrees. The um, summer of 2012, where we see this large number, you know, we had. Spring really start in March, which really had people out there. It was a really hot, so that average temperature 
for the, from Labor, excuse me, Memorial Day to Labor Day was about, almost about 80. So uh, when the temperature is, is warm, we're gonna see a, a lot of people at the beach. Here's uh, the financials uh, for, the, um, for the entire operation. As you can see, um, we, we do collect um, revenue uh, for um, the, both the, the basin and the beach. Um, we do have some expense from park maintenance uh, that, you know, they make sure that everything's clean, they groom, they cut grass. Uh, and then what, as you can see, there is um, about, on average, um, about a $50,000 loss. That loss is covered by um, tax dollars. Is, is, is this only for the beach or does this include Forest Park as well? Uh, this is both the, uh, the beach and the basin. But not the park. But not the park. Not the park. Right. Okay. So um, I have put on in front of everybody's chair the dialogue that's going to come out to your, uh, your home. But in the uh, middle is uh, our annual beach insert. So it will have pertinent information that every resident uh, would, would need to know. There's also some information for the uh, festival and fireworks. Uh, with the changes to that, that was pretty uh, pretty fun experience trying to get the, the insert um, to the printer in time. Uh, we also have on the, on the back side of that, we have the schedule for the concerts in the square, as well as the um, Lake, For excuse me, Lake Forest Day run. Uh, that is distributed to every household, but um, if someone uh, misplaced theirs, they can go online. It, it will be on the uh, department website. Is there uh, any questions? Any questions, guys? Um, I do think that depending on how the summer plays out, that parking issue is going to be huge. So, I mean, I'm not sure if there's anything more we can do about it. And I know no matter how many times you try to put it out and you will say, we did everything we could to tell everybody about this, when it's 85 degrees and people are there, they're gonna be so ticked off. I don't know what we can do, if anything, but um, right. there, there's gonna be a handful of days where it would really be nice to be able to do something. I mean, as a, as a, as a suggestion, could we, you know, if we know we're gonna have a problem or if we suspect, is there any way we could, we could create a shuttle service? Um, Hawk. The problem is that folks drive down and then, you know, they are going to have a car, so they got to go back uptown, and then we've got to get the, you know, they could, they may not want to shuttle down with all their things and back and what hours to offer that at. We've looked at it a few times. I mean, it's certainly an option, but it is a costly yeah. option, and, you know, we, we'd we have to schedule drivers in advance and, you know, sure. pay them um, regardless of how many people use it. So. I can I do know the first one well, of the first few years that I was here was the year that we did the boat um, we did the uh, North Shore Sanitary District project under the lower south lot and that became we took that lot out of play and um, that was uh, we had to do temporary parking along the ring road um, we did some upper addition we striped the upper south lot differently for the longer boats and so we really were trading off parking and it was a challenging summer but we did make it through um, that so I, I wouldn't say no Steve I think we're gonna have to play that by year and if it really becomes an issue we're gonna have to revisit that um, the other two options we're you know looking at right now is we're talking with the college to see if there's anything we could do with one of their area lots that you know a little bit closer than uptown for residents to go to um so we're we're starting those conversations and then the other item is and it's it's a tricky one but right now um there's 23 spaces right adjacent to um from sheridan road uh west right by the presbyterian church and they're already mm, painted right. uh, parking spots for sunday only um, or whatever. for sunday sunday only parking for the church so that's an option that the city could consider to make that allowable on overflow days only um because Seems that's like picking up basically all of the south lot that we lost would be in that look could go to that location and you're that much closer to the beach from there as opposed to the city lots city lots right so those are those are a couple options we're looking at to see you know what 
what it will be. Obviously, we've not had a very favorable spring, and um, it's been so rainy, it's hard to say, you know, what our summer will hold, but we are investigating some options right now. So. Um, let me throw out some more. These may be just ridiculous, but is there any way to park on the ring road? Is there any way to take, if the construction is taking place on one part of the forest park, but there's other areas that haven't gotten the work done yet, that you could park cars on, on the ground? Now the, uh, the ring road was reduced in size to only 16 feet, so there's not enough clearance for cars to park and pass each other. The reinforced turf that we are putting in so that on overflow days in the future you could park on the ring road will not have established sufficiently enough to withstand the car traffic on it this, this year. So the ring road is not an option for parking. Um, and uh, that's, you know, and there'll be, there will be construction weekdays using the ring road for the trucks to come in and out. So that's another, you know, this 80 degree day or 85 well, degree days on, on a Wednesday, you know. It's only gonna be on the weekends, it's gonna be a problem. Yeah, well, it's hard to, you know, it varies, um, especially with the kids um, off school. But we'll, we're gonna work through some of it. We'll, we'll, it's gonna be a learning curve for the community as well as for us. And we know it's not gonna be always easy, but that's why we are looking at, see what options that we can work out. I know the college, the last time we kind of had a similar situation was they were repaving and they actually were doing construction in the for their dorms and things like that. And so they had all pushed all their parking up to the parking along Deer Path. So that wasn't an option, but now that work's done. So that's why we think it might be something that they'd be willing to, to consider with us and partner with us. So, um, Well, now's the time to find the solution because yeah. I think it does need yeah. a solution. Exactly. Um, All right. Uh, the Raging Kitchen, how, I mean, uh, we put them in, I think they've got a two year contract. This is their second year. They, they have a three, yes. Is it three? Yeah, okay. So. How, I mean, how does it, how's it, is it meeting their expectations? As it, as a, a renter? Um, it, it, they, they, they really, I, you know, they love being down there. Um, not, I hear nothing but uh, compliments uh, from, um people that um uh, eat there that um have interaction with helen and her staff um i've talked to the the owner or the the, the manager of the uh, and they love being down there um, there are certain challenges that we have uh, with just being an outside <laughs> venue you know we have we have flies at times we have gnats that's you know really difficult for them um the space is small but they make it's very workable for them um overall i mean again um um the owner of rupac lives in the community right. wanted to give back okay. and this is how he gives back so we're fortunate for that well the only other thing i would say is you know all the high schoolers are challenging each other to get in the water and the fact that it's only 44 degrees um you know i think the staff and the board members ought to at least uh, challenge each other that by the next time we get to the board meeting we've all been in the water at least. Yeah. well actually i challenge you to a pulled pork sandwich eating contest with helen so all you're right interested. that's a little more up, up my alley. <laughs> yeah. now you're talking i, 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 I don't like cold you know, I'm, I'm, you know i don't want to even go near it and look but, shivers down my spine. I mean, so. last year they introduced so many wonderful new things through their opportunities. They had for kids, they had the their snacks were in buckets, so they bought the plastic, they bought the bucket, the snack was in it, and they could take their bucket and play in the sand. And they had hummus and carrot sticks. They had cheese boards with dried fruit, and you know, um, it was just really a great variety. And they also did theme kind of uh, dinners down there too. So. You know, they had fajitas, I think, one night with a kind of a Mexican, you know, fiesta theme and a Hawaiian night. So they do, they really, really added a lot of vibrancy, I think, to the food option. And it's not your average concession stand anymore. It's right. truly yeah. an enhancement to the beach. So I would encourage everybody to enjoy it. I know I wish I got down there more often for lunch, <laughs> but it's a, it's a good location to go. So well, yeah. I would just say it's such a fantastic asset. And you all do such a nice job of maintaining it. It's it's just great. Thank you. All right, um, Jason, uh, you're going to tell us. You're going to talk to us about the fitness center weight equi equipment uh, contract. It sounds like yes. We need to buy some more stuff. We are, and I know I was. I always Did think I was on that? the last 
agenda as well for additional equipment. Yeah. Um, previously, that was for purchase of treadmills. Um, this time, I'm here before you with um, continue with our equipment replacement plan. With this time being weight equipment versus the cardio equipment. So the again, it's very similar to the the cardio equipment. It was originally purchased in 2007. It <coughs> has reached its end of its useful life. Um, maintenance cost. The, oper the increased likelihood of increased maintenance costs is certainly there. Um, and this was a project that was actually deferred, that was originally scheduled in FY14 that did get um, pushed off until FY15. So, and like I said before, it is part of our overall scheduled replacement plan. Um, the benefit to these, this project, it will demonstrate to the members of the fitness center that we're continually um, operating new equipment and replacing the older equipment to improve their workout options. And as I mentioned before, it is a project that was um, initially deferred from FY14. Um, we are also offers the opportunity that we are listening to their feedback and is in continuing to replace equipment. And our actual current line of equipment is no longer in production. So um, any repairs could pose a, a significant problem if we needed any um, significant repairs to our current equipment. And then with the new equipment, it also helps decrease ho overall maintenance costs on an ongoing basis. Um, bids were put out for this, this project. Um, we received three bids, one from Life Fitness, uh, one from Direct Fitness Solutions, and a third one from a company called Pro Maxima. The Pro Maxima uh, bid was disqualified. They were um, unable to meet the bid specifications in a handful of different areas. Um, we did get valid bids from Life Fitness and uh, Direct Fitness Solutions. And for a total of each, we're proposing that we do split the bid between Life Fitness and Direct Fitness Solutions. And we split the bid up um, and we chose each piece of equipment based on the lowest bid that we re did receive or the piece that best met the spe bid specifications. And there were a couple of pieces, I think five in total, that met the bid specifications, but were not the lowest bid between the two companies. But the bid from the opposing company did not meet the specifications that were listed. So, so this um, was bid out like piece by piece, basically. That's correct, yes. Okay. So you're, let me just understand what you just said. So in other words, <coughs> it is the low, <coughs> excuse me, you're showing the lowest bid of a qualified bid. That's correct. For each individual item. For e per item. Yes. Okay. That's correct. So it's a total of uh, $23,733 from Life Fitness, um, $38,812.80 from Direct Fitness Solutions for a total of $62,545.80 grand total. And the original amount budgeted for this project was $105,000. So our requested action is a recommend to City Council the award contract to Life Fitness for the 23733 and the award to Direct Fitness <coughs> Solutions for $38,812.80 for the total expenditure of $62,545.80 for the purchase of the, of the weight equipment for the fitness center. All right, so, so why the big difference between the budget and where they came out? I mean, that's it's obviously to the good we're right. happy about that right I think when the initial um, long-term plan was put together and these estimates were put in the plan um, I think they assumed high at that point and not knowing exactly where equipment costs might be four or five years ahead of time um, that's my best guess uh, these numbers were actually in the long-term plan prior to me taking the position so I don't have a, a first-hand knowledge of that I assume that was done by the previous fitness manager mm. okay any questions mm -hmm. so moved to approve the uh, the purchase as laid out Second. all right all those in favor aye. Aye. aye any opposed no okay it passes thank you Jason thank you thank you so with all that uh, new equipment the fitness center is going to be uh, <laughs> dramatically improved versus where it's been and that's and that's great for 
for both uh, people who are members now um, as well as uh, prospective members. So I, I hope we're going to be telling the uh, community not just on this uh, uh, televised event, um, but you know, in other ways uh, about the, about that because that's a that's a nice improvement. When will everything be in place? So the treadmills and this equipment, everything will be in. The treadmills are currently in place. Okay. Um, the equipment, our idea is to have it delivered in mid-August during our shutdown week for maintenance. And we're going to be usually closed for a couple of days anyway within the fitness center. So our idea <coughs> is to have that equipment delivered during those two days of shutdown. Sounds good. Great. All right. Um, I guess, uh, Chuck, you, you, uh, you're going to talk to us about the, the Everett tot lot playground and proposed design options, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Good evening, uh, Chairman Hill and members of the board. Uh, I do have uh, information that just came in yesterday. We've been working with the contractor uh, on the tot lot. So I'm going to give you a hard copy and then I'll, I'll show you. The <coughs> So this item uh, is on the uh, FY15 CIP. Yeah. We budgeted for $100,000, and you'll notice right on the front page that um, the the raw numbers are there. We have the number for, numbers for the equipment, the site work, that kind of stuff, and the poured in place, which we're recommending for this. Um, so tonight, I'm just showing you uh, two options. And next month at the Committee of the Whole, we'll be presenting the whole thing. So I'll, you'll get all the details at that point. Uh, but for now, we just want to show you the, the two uh, options. And basically, uh, this does represent the actual site. You know, this is the tennis court that's uh, uh, just to the east of the playground. This is just the tot lot on the far uh, west side of the park. Um, we're not doing anything with the one by the school. So as you, if you've been out there, you know that there's a berm on both sides. Um, and we're actually lifting the playground uh, some because we want to match the grade of the path. It helps us with ADA, but it's also a good drainage thing. So we do have some added expense. That's why those site numbers are high, or the site preparation numbers are high. We are going to have to put in quite a bit of fill to do that. So we, we worked with uh, Mora at New Toys Leisure Products, and she put these together. So the first three slides are all the, the same design. So yeah, notice the, the color. This one has kind of a lime-colored top, and some of the pieces are lime. And then there's a, a darker green below. This doesn't show it that well, but the handout I gave you looks a little bit better. So um, we do, this is a tot lot, so it's uh, for kids, it's designed for kids that are two to five years old. And uh, you can't see it that well, but there are a lot of uh, PlayStations, these panels that have interactive things for them to do. And there are a number of slides that you can see on there. Um, a lot of things to climb on. Uh, and then we do have one ADA uh, chair, we do have the bucket for the younger kids and then the strap type swings. And then you can't see it on this one, but that is a modern day tire swing. So um, we also have a small little clubhouse that they can play in. Uh, this is just the opposite view. This is the path. This would be looking west uh, on the upper part of the screen. And this is just the overall look of the main structure. So um, all we did with the second option is change the colors. So um, we're still, you know, we're staff reviewed this a couple times. We've made some changes to the pieces of equipment, um, but <coughs> it's all designed to be, uh, to have a number of ADA features. Uh, it, as I said before, it is designed to have port in place. Uh, we do have some benches in there and all that. So. Um, we, we can still tweak this, we're not set on it, but the price uh, that we worked on fits within our $100,000 that we budgeted. So this is the, the second version. It's basically the same equipment though. Um, the colors here are similar to what was at Townline. And if, if you've seen the Townline one, you know it's a darker forest green color with the kind of tan roof. 
So this doesn't show up very well, but um, you can look at that in your packet as well. So we're, we're just seeking uh, some feedback on the playground as a whole, color preferences. Uh, we can send this out uh, to the people that aren't here tonight. We can send it out electronically and get some feedback. Um, but just wondering uh, if, if there are preferences on this right now or uh, so that we can go forward and finalize our plans. Uh, by the way, we do plan on installing this uh, in August. It's a time when our grounds or our parks guys, parks grounds guys, are caught up usually on, on things like mowing slows down, so they're able to do this. We're saving about $15,000 by having our staff install this as well. So um, anyway, that, that's what I have for that. Is there any... Any, any like comments from anybody? Questions? What's the life expectancy for this stuff? I mean, how long is this the equipment say been down at the beach now? Uh, at the beach, uh, Sally can probably help me with that. It's that isn't that old. It does have the port in place underneath, right. so uh, I don't have the numbers with me. But it's less than ten years old. No, I think it's ten. Oh, I'm sorry. The port in place went in after, so it's twelve, a little over. Uh, usually, we figure about twenty years. I was going to say that's still pretty pretty good shape right the stuff down at the beach yeah yeah it is on the on the old playground there you'll see the paint is peeling off and it's it's getting pretty worn out so um, the one at the school is even more worn out we want to replace that one fairly soon but we want to work with the school and see if we can work out some kind of partnership on that one just so just we decided to do this one first just also to add to it, um, the reason we have two playgrounds, just to remind the board, I know we talked about it when we did the capital um, workshop, was that the school, because that's a shared playground during the daytime hours to ensure a separation from the public from the school activities, we have a second playground here and we gear it towards the tots. And I know I've been out there recently too, and we all were out there that, you know, that you do see this part, this playground used quite a bit from the neighborhood um, with, with the young children. The other thing I would mention, which you can't see in this sketch, but the existing playground currently is old wood timbers that are retaining walls. They're very rotted. Um, we have a sand box that is uh, holds a lot of water it's not real sanitary for those kinds of things so that was one of the goals we had when we looked at this was how to maximize the pool, space really. to get rid of the sand but add the swings what was that said, well, it's more of a waiting who pool, said lake right? forest didn't have a waiting <laughs> <Yeah. That's right. laughs> um, so one of the you know we really uh, as a as a staff um, enjoy working on these projects and a lot of creativity trying to look at it and um, I know I'm always uh, when I look at playgrounds and I, Sally too look Looking at it from a overseeing the preschool program for so many years is the variety of ways to get on and off the playgrounds, uh, an opportunity to be suspended in air, uh, which is the kind of the bridge across the main area. We call it the Sharky, you know, and moments. Um, the uh, opportunities for um, kids to maneuver themselves up the onto the pieces or to have assistance and that parents can help get up can easily get up on the pieces with the kids um, a tunnel experience is also another sensory kind of change for them so when we work on these things we are trying to incorporate all those kinds of interactive dynamics and make the playground as fun and, and different you know for the kids um, but we did want to make sure that again this is a west side playground we've gone in the direction of the um, port in place so the accessibility is ideal it's less maintenance for the parks crew by sh by far um, and that in this particular uh, environment I think um, you know it's it's a good location for us to have another port in place um, surface area there so um, the trees are staying for the most part right Chuck that uh, around no, well a couple of them are there's actually in the playground itself there's an ash tree uh, that's in a boxed off area that one is definitely coming out uh, we built the playground around that there are two ash trees on the hill that eventually will come out and um, that only leaves a crab and a couple of other trees so about half the trees will be gone eventually we're only going to take the one ash out right away the others two, two look okay um, but um, 
Yeah, as, as Mary said, Mary and Sally are looking at the function of the playground. Uh, our guys and myself, we're looking at the maintenance. So we, <laughs> we took the opportunity to make a few changes that have been a problem over the years, especially that uh, retaining wall, which it's made out of wood and the bees love it and the guys constantly have to get bees out of there. So we're doing some grading. We're cleaning up the blacktop that's next to the... Uh, uh, the back by the the tennis court. So uh, it's nice to get the opportunity when you're doing this to make the changes that are going to make it easier for the guys. And as Mary said, the, the port in place is kind of key to that. I have to admit, I um, hadn't really thought about, <clears throat> you know, the, the different age groups and how they relate to, you know, these, these, uh, these little uh, park amenities. And I'm wondering, um, and maybe you've told me this before, Mary, and, and I just wasn't doing a good job of listening, but um, have, we, have we geographically located our, you know, our, our play sets, if you will, by age group around the, you know, around the community so that there are tot lots, for example, close to you know, all the neighborhoods or at least within a relatively good well, distance? I mean, these are in our neighborhood parks and um, they do, this park does serve um, quite a large neighborhood on the west side of, of the community because other than town line, this really is that west side park. So it does, that's why it does get, I think, so much use. And it's a beautiful park, as you know, we have a baseball field there. Uh, so even Best during, one in town, yep. yeah. Yeah, so when we have the weekend or Saturday games, baseball games, the younger children go there. We have the pond with a beautiful gazebo over it. So there's a variety of reasons to attract, I think, other use than just the drop-in, you know, play to this park. So, um, but we don't, you know, we do have playgrounds in all of our parks for the most part now, um, and they're all very well used in the community. But we, but we don't have tot lots. Um, well, this one has just been identified. No, we, normally it's an all age together. Like Northcroft has a tot and uh, elementary age, if you will, I see. together. Um, <coughs> but in Deer pa or West Park is that way. South Park is that way. It's just because of the uniqueness of the school situation. We already have the older age group playground that's going to be replaced in that same park that we were able to focus this on the tot. Because um, during the school day, most of the kids are on, that are in the neighborhood are on the school playground at school and so we just needed it for the tot on the weekends they use both you know all of them so I and i think when we do the elementary lot you'll see where well, we're seeing that kids today especially the preschoolers are very adventurous and they'll go on a lot of the playground equipments for the older kids because it's built so well and so safe today um you know to do that so 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 chuck um you know gave us two he, he, he was nice enough to give us two options from a color standpoint. I noticed that you didn't make it too complicated yeah, for us. I appreciate that. Can, it's not can a real I get big a, playground. <laughs> can, I, can, I get, can I get guys to, will you weigh in on this uh, publicly here? What do you prefer? I prefer this one, the non-lime green one. The darker colors? The dark yes. one. That's town line colors. Okay. Right. What about, what about you, <laughs> Dan? Um, you know, I kind of defer on this one. I don't really have a strong feeling. Um, one way or the other so Scoo, um, are you are you willing I can to see where the kids would enjoy a brighter i color. like the darker color darker color all right well we we shouldn't make any decisions i don't think we don't have to make any decisions yeah. now but i think there's a general direction in the toward the darker okay more muted yeah okay very good all right the absence of any other Chuck, options yeah oh, so, sorry no, chairman hill um so You've bid this out. You sort of know what the costs are. Can I ask why we're waiting until the uh, June Committee of the Whole to uh, ask for approvals? Uh, well, I don't have, I just got the final design. I consider this the final design that's taken place over the last month or so. Um, so we didn't have all the information to give you to get the approval. This isn't really going to put us in any kind of a time crunch because if we come back to you at the Committee of the Whole and get approval next month, we can take it to City Council. And if it's approved there, we can get the, the equipment within three weeks. So we, won't, we don't want to install it until August anyway, or we can't, we don't have the labor. We may start doing some of the demo and some of the site work ahead of time, but we're fine with this schedule. And I, I will also say that it was partly on my uh, direction because I wanted to make sure that we had a meeting where there was at least feedback. Mm -hmm. If there was anything that you didn't like, like we want less <coughs> swings, 
we think you should have a sandbox or you know we don't want to do port in place we would know that before we we're asking for actual approval so we have that extra yeah. month so yeah. no so, worries it just seems yeah. like we have it a bit backwards that this right dialogue would be at a committee of the whole and the approval would be right at so yeah it, originally it was plan for the well, April May. All right. Since yeah, no, I understand. Since you've engaged me, I will say I don't know about this tire swing. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't uh, I've seen them before and I've never seen any kids using them because hmm. a real swing, you know, you get the you get a much better sensation than you get off of this tire swing which moves about 2 feet in either direction. <laughs> so We we have one It's up a lot of space. We have one at Deer Path um, uh, preschool playground, a hugely popular swing, and we have one now at this park. Yeah. in this playground and it's the kids are always on all it. right i, I so. talked to our guys about it too i had the same question and i asked our representative and our guys and they said yeah people use it a lot okay. the kids love it so and jimmy buffett said life is a tire swing so you can't you can't lose the tire swing jimmy buffett said a lot of things and smoked a lot of things all right oh all right Chuck, you had something else, uh, the capital improvement project yeah. update. I'll quickly go through these updates. Um, the McClory bike path, uh, we talked about that last, well, it was two months ago now, uh, but we went out to bid, uh, Public Works did that, their engineering staff did this, so they have arranged all the bidding and all that kind of stuff. So last time we <coughs> let you know it was happening, so today, I took these pictures last week, actually. So it's all in, it's 10 foot wide now, which is consistent with the uh, bike path plan. So this is one of the first big steps in achieving the, the master plan. Uh, so this goes from Woodland, the bridge, up to the uh, city line in Lake Bluff. So the trail looks great. Uh, Peter Baker uh, did the trail. It's one continuous width, it's not there's no seam in the middle, so it looks great. It is still closed as of right now. We closed it until the end of the month. Uh, we'd like to open it, and I'm pretty sure people are using it no matter how we close yeah. it. But we're, we're renting a machine to clean up the edges. Some of the edges are pretty good. They have grass, but you can't see it here. But a lot of this is stubble. We're, we're renting a machine tomorrow, as a matter of fact, to grind things up, and we want to get some grass growing. So we'll have a buffer that will mow on each side. Is, is is the trail going to be sealed? Sealed? No, it, this is it. There is no sealer. There's no seal coating or anything like that? No, th this is it. And how long do you expect this trail to last? Well, they usually tell us with roads, asphalt gets a, has a 20-year life cycle. So uh, sure. with this path... to God's ears. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> Unless it's the Edens. <laughs> yeah, well... I, um, I unless it's every that asphalt, asphalt road I've ever seen. <laughs> old asphalt, some people will tell you, is better asphalt. I don't know why, just the changes in the, the makeup over the years. So we plan on getting 20 years because the use on this isn't that heavy. I mean, it's bikes and an occasional maintenance vehicle. We do plow this. So that's the biggest wear. I mean, yeah, what would, what would get this is, is the ice, you know, in the wintertime. And yeah, well, and that, that seam that I mentioned that we don't have is a big deal because that crack that always opens up gets moisture and it breaks it up and you'll see that on the southern end of the McClory Trail there's some big cracks that keep getting bigger and we're gonna have to resurface it so this is one piece and I'll remind you that the next piece will start in the fall with that grant that's gonna go from Woodland down to Illinois that stretch that's going to get the bike path out of the parking lot of the East train station. So it, it's, you know, we're slowly working on the McClory. This is a great piece to have done. I think people are gonna love it. We are gonna put a, uh, the stripe down the middle. Uh, it may be a few weeks before they do that, but it'll be marked. So should be very popular. And um, our public works department tied this into the same contract that is doing the McKinley Road there. So right next door, that all is gonna be done. So the spurs that come off of this trail aren't done yet, but they'll be connected when they do the road. So it was, it was a nice plan. I, I think it is coming together nicely. Great. It's been timed around important things like graduation day, we don't wanna tear up the road. So it was, it was a, a really nice uh, project working with engineering and coordinating with Michael Thomas and his staff so very impressed with the way it came out it's phenomenal so we want to get the edges done and we'll open it up and uh, on to the next CIP so 
we have two tennis courts that are uh, going on right now. This is Northcroft. This is what it looked like Monday. Those, you can't see it that well, but these posts are new posts. And remember here at Northcroft, we're doing the post and the, uh, the mesh material as well. They haven't started any of the resurfacing or anything like that. The big story here is the weather. Um, we've just been told that with all the rain, they can't go out and do that. So uh, the rest of the fence should go quick actually. Um, and we should have this done within the next two weeks. So hopefully we get a nice break from the rain. As far as deer path goes, um, the same contractor will be doing that, assuming they successfully complete this one. That won't start until July 7th. Um, and we time that with the bike path and the, the deer path uh, resurfacing, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, so that's the tennis courts. Um, and keep in mind, Northcroft is a carryover from the FY14 budget year. Uh, deer path is actually in FY15. So deer path walking path, that uh, last time I reported that it was going to be a joint bid with the school, the school did back out on that for the time, for, for a time. They just weren't comfortable with moving forward and we had the package all ready to go. Since then, the city has uh, helped them go out to bid on their own. So it wasn't a joint bid, but we did get very favorable um, results from our bid uh, opening. Uh, so the final amount was $89,000. Uh, All Star uh, was the one that won the, the award. Uh, we, the, the budget amount was 100,000, so we were happy with that. We put in an extra 5% contingency, and so for a total of 93,000. Uh, this went to city council just last night and city council did approve it. So we're moving forward on this uh, after and, and July 7th is significant obviously because we want to have the 4th of July celebration done at Deer Path. Then we move into this and tear up the park and get it all back together by the next school season. So the, so. Way, the way that it came out, Chuck, we are gonna get rid of the Western we are. component to fix mm -hmm. the uh, wetland yes. issue and then we'll build the new um, yep. path on just the, uh, west, just of, west the ball, of the ball, right. ball diamonds, right. exactly. So and we, we did it. add in the ADA access uh, to the ball fields. We did get the permits from SMC. They were, were required to have those for the wetland disturbance. Um, and we'll restore that with native grasses on the far end, but then the turf in the field. So everything is set. It looks good on that. The engineers will be picking that up and managing the contract for us. So going to reward that um, frankly. the next thing I wanted to show you just really quick, uh, this was added uh, to the city's website. So I'll just take you through how to get there. This is something that the city worked with our GIS department. And it's just for our residents, if they want to get updates on any construction, most of them are actually engineering construction projects, but we added ours in here also. So you just go under services where it says construction updates. You see the big map here, little map, you can click there or here. And if you want to know the status of a CIP project, you can either click on all these pictures over here, which you can see a lot of them are roads. That's engineering. But at the bottom, we do have the uh, parks project. So if you, you can click on Forest Park or we just added the um, deer path. So it shows up here, it shows you where it is, and then you can hit the details. And I know it's probably hard to read, but it, it basically just says who to contact, uh, when the bid opening and all that kind of stuff. And it says what that the course courts will be closed for for that time frame so it's just an added thing that the the uh, uh, that staff put together to help people become more informed they can if people call they can let them know that there's a real simple way to find out where these projects are it, it's honestly it's probably more it will be used more by people that are worried about road construction they're going to want to know when the road in front of their house is being torn up so but in the parks it's nice if people uh, want to know Forest Park, it is being updated on a regular basis, so you can find out what's going on. I think that's right. terrific. That's really neat. Is it something that, that the people who are, work, are, are running these projects can easily update then? Yes. 
Yeah, they do. We don't update it ourselves yet because uh, <laughs> some of the... Uh, but you drive that car? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and, and we like it that way. <laughs> we, have, we have what's it's called a, web authors. Yeah. <laughs> They're the trained folks. So, so if you go on there and it, it has an update and the update is for April, you won't come to me saying, why is it not updated? But we're going to try to keep it updated. That's the challenge with any website that has dates on it. No question about it. It's tough. Yeah. But we're going to try to keep it updated, and I know they'll uh, we'll add more projects to it too. When we have the playground, we'll put that on. So thanks, Chuck. Good All stuff. Right, Lots you. of good stuff going on. Obviously, it's your busy season, huh? Yeah. It is. Um, Mary, you have have. Uh, yes, I have just a few things. Things tonight. to say. Um, under my director's report, um, first thing I just want to remind you, we'll be having our capital visioning workshop uh, next week on the 28th um, be at municipal services from 6 30 to 8 30. Um, uh, we're really looking forward to strong attendance by you know park board and the foundation members we are mixing tables up we have table assignments so that we can have a good interactive dialogue and the goal of the workshop um, that we've touched upon before is really to to look at new ideas that have come forward in the last seven years and identify what are some of the top interests that we might have of getting staff to do further research on to look at opportunities to do some enhancements in our park and rec system that uh, residents have expressed interest in or that um, foundation has expressed interest in so that the foundation in essence can continue to be a, a significant factor in helping improve the community and, and fundraise on behalf of parks and recreation so um, we're excited about that we do have a facilitator assisting us it's just a starting point conversation we're not deciding anything at the workshop you know it's no you know we aren't going to come away with a to-do list that's going to be done in a month but it is to start the dialogue between the two boards and to um, at least start to get a, a sense of what we might want to do some more research on so um, wanted to share that one um, second thing was uh, as mentioned the June meeting is a committee of the whole meeting when we set those up we had um, identified that we wanted to keep the committee of the holes as more of our workshops and no action but in the event that we had items that required or we know needed action that we would properly notice those as part of the agenda and we do have that situation for June um, two key items that we'd like to bring forward at the committee of the whole in the June uh, 17th meeting is the first one is our recreation software placement project we have been as you are aware we've been working on that since pa this past September we have vendor demonstrations um, one is tomorrow once the following week and this is about a two hundred and ninety thousand dollar capital item it is to manage all of the business functions of about four million dollars of our revenue and our facility scheduling that goes through that system so um, very big capital project we've had a team of about 15 from all city departments working on including our IT department so our goal is to to bring a vendor um, recommendation through to you for approval and at the June meeting so that we could take it on to council at their July meeting and then then we can begin negotiating a contract with that vendor and looking at an implementation schedule so right. um, our bid results did come back we had um, four vendors bid on it uh, at this point we're dem we're uh, demoing two and um, that we felt both clearly matched our specification needs. And we have a third best, best of breed um, vendor that we'll be looking at uh, at a later date as well. So, um, so we're really excited about it. It's made a lot of progress. And the second item at the Committee of the Whole would be the playground project so that we can keep on track with the construction for that. Um, and so those are two action items that I just wanted to give you a heads up about for Committee of the Whole. Um, we so we'll we should right. mention to the public that the Committee of the Whole meetings, while they're not televised, are open to the public. That's and correct. so you're encouraged to come if you have comments on those projects or others. And that meeting, those meetings are held at municipal services instead of here. Um, the next item I had was I just <coughs> remind you all about the foundation's upcoming events. The um, their golf outing is on June 6. We would encourage all of you to come play around a golf. It's a very very fun day, a great fundraiser. Um, and if you can't play golf, maybe you can join us for you know lunch um, that day. So if you could let us know, I, I've sent out recent uh, registration forms, so we're anxious to get our golfers uh, squared away. So let us know on that we do have some city council members uh planning to play in the mayor that day so put me down for a foursome what's that put me down for a foursome okay. i will be yeah. there foursome. i assume um, everyone else will be there i want to encourage you all to be there anyway 
Um, and then the other item is that we have, uh, the foundation wanted me to mention is that um, our original uh, artist for the festival and fireworks, Gretchen uh, Wilson, um, had uh, withdrawn all of her summer concerts due to uh, medical issues. So um, we had to go out and look for a new act and we we're very excited. We got a great one, we think. We have actually two. It's gonna be Big Todd Big, Big head, head Todd, Todd and the Monsters, and 10,000 Maniacs. So um, we're really excited to uh, have such great entertainment. So that is a little bit of a change. So you can put the cowboy hats away for one more year, but come out for uh, these wonderful concert. And the tickets are on sale online on the foundation's website. So we encourage you to do that um, and go ahead and get your tickets uh, ordered now. That's right. Between now and, and the middle of June, June 15th, uh, t there is a ticket deal, actually. That's correct. Buy, buy three tickets and you get one free. So that's the, uh, yeah. uh, that's the best deal going. And fundraising um, is going well for them, but it is um, they have a great deal of expense to cover for the festival and fireworks. And so the day of is really where they um, help raise monies that then come back to Parks and Recreation to support what we need to do from scholarships to our capital needs, et cetera. So it really, it's not run by the city. It's not funded by the city. It is a fundraised event by our foundation. So encourage everybody to come support that in one with parking tickets and you can also sponsor if you're interested. Um, the next item I had was um, uh, we are looking to get a report in shortly here from the Lake Forest Lake Bluff Joint Task Force. I know Dan you're been involved with that. Um, so uh, the two direct myself and the executive director from Lake Bluff Park District will be hearing the first um, kind of reporting in of that uh, this week and then we anticipate or that I've been told the task force anticipates sharing that a little broader after we've kind of looked had a first chance to look at it but I know they've been working hard on it and again that was to see if we could find opportunities for shared services um, you know synergies between the two communities that made sense to maximize uh, our recreational assets that we have um, so that's they've made a lot of progress um, and then the the last thing that um, I had down here that I just you know wanted to um, mention too is that um, we may um, I may want to get a sense from all the board about your travel plans for the June and July meetings so we can make sure that we'll have um, quorums for those upcoming meetings um, and uh, just so that I can plan appropriately I know some of you may already have some thoughts on that so if you do have those if you could send those to me and we could start to make sure we're going to have everybody in place this summer that would be great and that's it for my report tonight terrific thanks all right guys this is your big chance comments from anybody who's attending well i'll keep them brief but uh, you know david and i were attending some of the dance recitals i think david's attended all of them i attended some of them um this weekend and obviously sally was there and a lot of staff were there um just a great program for for young women in our community who i think it really means a lot to uh, i stopped by the open lands city plant sale saw peter gordon who was basically you know working it telling people what <coughs> what these plants would work and where and everything and uh, i know others were out there giving up their weekend as well and so i just um want to commend staff i know it's it's not just a monday through friday eight to five job and it showed this last weekend for sure terrific any other comments scoop mm -hmm. all right with that we will adjourn you need a motion I oh we need a motion Second. to adjourn so moved Second. all right all those in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Nice work, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> nice work. Thank you, gentlemen. June 6th. All right. June 6th.